Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nella for those of you who don't know and today I have a very interesting video. I'm going to be telling you guys exactly how much I make as a doctor in Jamaica and I'm talking about real figures. Interested in finding out? Let's get into the video. Alright guys, so from the title you guys know that I'm talking about how much doctors or how much I get paid as a medical doctor living in Jamaica. Now, this is a video that I had planned to do somewhere along the line. I had written it down as content idea, but with the recent talk on social media of how much young professionals are getting paid comparative to how the cost of living is, ex is, is high. Cost of living is high compared to how much we're getting paid, so it is harder for people to make a life and to build a life, as well as compounding on the fact that the recent All Angles interview where Dion Jackson Miller was speaking to a medical professional and ex, you know, trying to see how much or how hard it is to be a practicing professional, especially looming on this post-COVID season where so many doctors were actually working over time and working more extensively as well as the treatment and all of that if you guys missed it there's a replay but basically comp because of all of that i thought it was a good idea to kind of just jump and give you my perspective and give you an idea of how much i get paid in jamaica adding to the conversation plus i know i was looking at videos like rush time talking about the lawyers and the smile fair talking about dental assistant so i'm just giving you guys a good idea or so you can get an idea of how much we get paid as medical doctors in Jamaica. This is not to, you know, bash or cost the system. It's just for you guys to know the reality of where we are, how much our salary is compared to how much work we do. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. So I'm going to just stop my yibber yabbering and get into the video. Now, let me tell you guys, first of all, exactly how doctors make money in Jamaica before I get into how much I make. Now, how you make money in Jamaica dependent on a few things. First of all, it dependent on where you are, where your stage or your rank or whatever, how advanced you are in your career. So an intern, you know, just finished medical school is not going to make the same as a consultant who is a specialist, who has finished all their training and they are at the highest level in the profession, right? So when I began internship, I, will, I earned about $137,000 a month. And my take-home pay for the first month of internship, because when you begin internship, you don't get, you know, duty money. Um, based on my basic salary, my take-home pay after taxes was $89,000, right? For that month, $89,000. So, as mentioned before, if you're a consultant, you're going to be making way more than if you are an intern, Right? Now, the next thing that determines how much you make as a doctor in Jamaica is whether or not you practice in public system, private system, or a combination of both. Now, in the public system, it is a very standard system. You are given a pay scale based on your level. So at each level, there is a pay scale. The pay scale determines how much your basic salary is, what your duty rate is, as well as any other benefits the percentage or the rate at which you got you get other benefits like traveling and duty and meals and all of that right now in a private system that is i can't tell you about that because i don't work in a private system but that is usually based on how much the person charges as well as their specialty and exactly they determine based on their location and based on their charges and based on their expenses for running their practices from that they allocate their salary right so public system, private system, a combination of both. Now, oftentimes, a combination of both is usually done by consultants who they are at the highest level, so they're getting paid the highest at the government level as well as they do private practice. But remember, private practice may also be those people who do exclusive private practice in um, as a general practitioner, family practitioner, or another specialist who may decide that they're going to just do exclusively private practice. But when it's a combination of both, oftentimes it is done at a consultant level or at least at a medical officer in certain specialties where they oftentimes do even have duties. All right, so let's, so you got that clear. Based on your level or how far you are in the in your training as a medical professional and whether or not you work in a private, public 
or a combination of both. Now, the next thing that determines how much a doctor is paid is based on their specialty. Now, certain specialties, and depending on whichever area you're specializing, gets paid more. When you work in primary care, you get significantly less than if you do a surgical specialty like neurosurgery, right? So a primary care physician is getting less than a neurosurgeon. And everybody in between is based on their different level of specialization. The more specialized you are, the more you can charge for your services, right? And now the final thing that contributes to a doctor's salary, especially in the public system, is the duties. Now, duties are given at an hourly rate. And it is dependent on whether or not you work during the week or on the weekend. So during the week, the duty rate is less. You work 16 hours, which means your duty starts from 4 p.m. and you go back to 8 a.m. However, at 8 a.m., you usually have work up until 4 p.m. the next day. So you're usually going from 8 o'clock one morning to 4 o'clock the next evening. Even though you're only paid for the duty for the 16 hours, which is the 4 p.m. to the 8 a.m. Now, on weekends, you're paid differently, as well as on holidays. So on Saturdays, you get paid a specific rate, and then on Sundays, you're paid at a higher rate, and on holidays, you're paid at the same Sunday duty rate. So you guys are with me, how we're getting paid. Where you are, how you're ranking in the, the field, how far you are in your career, whether or not you work in private, public, or a combination of both, your specialty, whatever specialty you choose, as well as how much you're getting paid for duties. Now, let me just tell you that not all specialties get duties. There are quite a few specialties or quite a few areas where you do get duties. So in primary care, you don't get duties. There, may, there are some health centers that do do extended hours where they may ask people to work a little bit later. And so they get paid for that extended block, which is usually a four hour block. But other than that, no duties. Radiology, also a specialty where they don't get duties, emergency medicine, and some medical subspecialties don't get duties as well. All right, so now everybody is getting duty money. The next thing that adds up, so that is how you get your basic salary, right? The next thing that contributes to how much you get paid as a doctor if you work in a public system is that we get a traveling allowance. Now, your traveling allowance also is rated based on where you are in your in your career so an intern gets paid less as a traveling allowance than if you're a resident and if you're a consultant when you're an intern you get a taxi or commuting fee when you're a resident or sho senior house officer you get paid a commuted fee which is different and when you're a consultant you get full upkeep for your maintenance of your vehicle right no so we have our basic salary, we have our commuted fees. The next thing that contributes to your salary is that we get a meal allowance for when you do duties. It's not a lot, but you do get a meal allowance. So those are the three things that pretty much anybody who is working in the public system does duties get. Now, as I mentioned before, duties is where, that is where the difference in salaries come about because some people do more duties than others based on whatever specialty they are in, all right? Now, there's another thing that may contribute to someone's salary, and that is based on your location, wherever you're placed or wherever you're practicing as a doctor. There's something called a location incentive, which is a little bit of extra fee that is added on to incentivize you to stay in a particular location because maybe that location is not where other people want to go. Right, or it might be a volatile area where there's the possibility of shootings and all of that jazz. Right? And from that so you get your so your salary is determined from all of that. So you get your basic salary, your traveling, and those are the two that everybody who works in the public system get basic and traveling. Then if you do duties, you get meal allowance and you get duty based on how many duties you do and the duty rate and then if you work in a certain area you may get a location incentive now that is before tax taxes which are taken out is the general taxes so everybody gets taken out income tax as well as there is also the take out of any nis nht education tax those are all coming out of your salary now what doctors don't get is that we don't get a pension we don't get Healthcare. Although, if you work in 
uh, hospital. You can try, you can get healthcare through the hospital's healthcare, but you don't get healthcare. You don't get a pension and you don't get things like uniform allowance and all of that, right? So you don't get none of that. Only thing that everybody gets, traveling so that you can get to work. All right, so that is where we are. How doctors get paid. Still with me. Hope you guys, I hope I haven't confused anybody and everybody is still with me as to how doctors get paid. Now, let's get into the salary. I mentioned before that when I was an intern, my basic salary was $137,000 a month, right? And this is looking back on my pay slip from then because I do keep my pay slips. Yes, yes. Because it is the best way for you to know if any error has been made so you can collect your money because government don't like all people government like all people but don't like when you owe them so you have to keep on top of it because okay because all right so now let's get into how much i make now i am a medical officer medical officer grade one which means that i have finished internship which is your first year after medical school i finished senior house officer which is the second year after medical school and then after that you become a medical officer one now even though i am medical officer one it's not my third year practicing medicine it's actually my fifth year practicing medicine so your how you go up in rank is dependent on the advancement that you make in your career if you're in a program if you pass the program and other and other things contribute to your advancement from medical officer one to medical officer two time you've been working there any qualification and advancements that you've made in the time all of that it's complicated do have time for that we're here to talk about how much you get paid so I'm a medical officer grade one so everybody at my level in the government system gets paid the same basic salary and that basic salary I'm going to tell you and I'm going to look at my face and tell you exactly how much it is so don't go nowhere so if y'all think I was joking when I'm telling you real figures I mean real figures so how much I paid got paid per month or I get paid per month for a medical officer grade one is hundred and eighty five thousand a hundred and forty eight dollars per month and this is after a recent increase in April because prior to that I was getting a hundred and seventy six thousand three hundred and thirty one dollars and forty two cents per month that was my basic salary that's how much I get per month before taxes the next thing is the meal allowance is five thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars and ninety two cents and that has not raised there was no increase in that that's just how much we get and our commuted allowance is forty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty four dollars and that is after i believe there was a slight no there wasn't an increase so yeah forty nine thousand seven $49,754. So that is how much you get as basic. Basic, basic, basic salary. How much everybody gets. So how much in total that you get as a, just working in the healthcare system as a medical officer is $185,000 plus $49,000. And that is your traveling plus your commuted. And from that, taxes are, ta are taken. So before tax, I'm going to calculate and total how much you get before tax. And then, you know, I won't tell you how much you get after tax because I'm not working all of that out. But I'll tell you how much you get before tax. So that works out to a total of $234,902 before tax. And that is usually what someone who works in like primary care gets if they don't do additional duties, additional sessions or are fortunate enough to be able to they worked in a specialty before that allows them to do duties with them when they're short staff or when you know they need some kind of rest so that is how much you get base basic basic and that is basic and traveling now duties the first thing you should know about duties are duties are paid two months in a back which means that if you do duty in January you're not going to see that duty money till March if you do duty in February, you now see that till April. So whenever you do duties, you have to wait two months before you can get your duty money. And duties, as mentioned before, is done at an hourly rate. Now, 
I mentioned before that is not every specialty the duty certain specialty what they get some specialties get a lump sum salary which they get in lieu of duty which is maybe like seventy thousand dollars extra added onto their their um salary and that is to compensate for them not doing duties and but it's not every specialty get who doesn't do duty get that and then after that taxes are taken out and remember you have income tax which is 25 percent you have nis you have nht you have education tax and any other thing you may be paying towards for example if you're paying out your car loan or if you're contributing to something that is also taken out of your salary so i'm gonna tell you now the duty rate right so the duty rate for m1 which is recent is $1,420 per hour during the weekdays and $1,846.43 during the weekends. All right? All right? And as mentioned before, duties are paid at an hourly rate and after duties, taxes are also taken out because, you know, tax, 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 everybody have to pay tax. Now, let me tell you something about duties. That is how doctors make different salaries the duties the duties is really where doctors make money now depending on your specialty depending on your hospital depending on a lot of things determines how much money you can make from duties now there are some hospitals especially in the rural areas where they don't have an extensive staff they may have two teams per specialty and so you're doing duty every other day as you finish duty eight o'clock and you're probably still seeing posts, call patients, you know, so the next morning you have duties. So imagine you're working from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. the next day, and you go home, you get your little rest, and you have duty the next day. Yes, you're getting paid more, but where do you have the time to spend that money? You're tired, you're popped down, and you're going through life, and you're struggling. Then you have some specialties that the duty one in three, and those are usually subspecialties like neurosurgery or other kind of specialties they will work one in three duties then you have other specialties like internal medicine general surgery they will work one in four and as I mentioned before I should tell you this is also dependent on your hospital because if your hospital only have two firms you know say so working one in two if they have three firms or three managing teams you can work one in three if you have four you're working one in four so don't even take this as concrete some people are working duty every other day and then they as much as, and the more you get paid is the more you get taxed so do everything say oh they're making bank because they're working every other day because the more the higher you get paid is the more you get taxed if you say you work if you, you get paid hundred thousand dollars them take out twenty thousand dollar tax you work five hundred thousand them taking out hundred thousand dollar tax so you know so the more you work the more you're getting taxed okay as well as you're tired your body is pop down and you're overwork underpaid and getting stressed and because your basic salary is not sufficient okay all right guys so what i forgot to tell you is that the reason why i get paid more on the weekends is because you work from 8 a.m to 8 a.m so it's a 24 hour duty where you start 8 a.m on the saturday finish 8 a.m on the sunday and then you start 8 a.m. or you start 8 a.m. on the Sunday and finish 8 a.m. on the Monday. Same thing for holidays. You go from 8 a.m. on the holiday morning straight back to the next day. Now, depending on how you are, how you work in the hospital system, that may mean that you may finish 8 a.m. on Sunday morning and you can go home. But if you work, if you finish 8 a.m. Monday morning, you usually have the Monday morning work day, which is 8 to 4 again or later, depending on whatever specialty you're in. Some specialties, um, 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, when you finish 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, it only means that you still have to do the post due to work, whatever was left over from the night before, you still have to do it, right? And so you may not actually finish at 8 o'clock, you may finish 12 o'clock, you may finish 11 o'clock, you may finish 1 o'clock, you may finish 2 o'clock, whenever the post duty work is done, that is when you are done. Whenever post call rounds are done, that is when you are done. So... The, but you are only paid for the 24 hour period, which is 8 a.m. one day to 8 a.m. to the next week, day. Same way how when you're working during the week, the work day starts from 8 to 4, which is the regular work day. And then you're only paid for the duty hours, which is 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next day. And then you have work again, 8 to 4 again. And whatever work is left over, you still have to finish. So 
that is kind of how the duty money comes into play about the 16 hours which is during the week which is 4 p.m from the end of the work day until 8 a.m the next day as well as 8 a.m of the weekend or the holiday to the 8 a.m of the next day all right so i hope you guys get a better understanding of what i mean by duty hours work hours and how much you get paid more on the weekend and that's because you're working longer hours on the weekend now so i'm giving so i'm giving you real figures you guys i'm giving you a real real take okay so how much i get paid right so i get travel i'm not going to give you guys exactly how much i get paid but i'll tell you guys what i get i get um basic salary which i mentioned before was like 185,000 i get traveling which is the 49,000 i get a location incentive because of where i work and that is 17,000 i get a meal allowance which is like 5 8 and i get duties so based on how many duties i do between depending on the month it varies month to month how much i get paid and from all of that, I get tax. So I take home, sometimes you may take home 250, other times you may take home 280, other times you may take home 300, sometimes you may take home less. It just all depends on the number of duties you are doing for the month, and that is how doctors get paid in the public system. Now remember, you know, after all of our salary, 250, 280, 300, whatever, 400, 500,000, however much you get money, f how much, however much you're getting paid per month, you, you know, you exclude or you take out your taxes, you take out your student loan, you get to, your contributions to whatever thing, your car loan, you might take out your rent, you take out any fees, and I mean, you might have a child or children and you have to take out those things and find money, so that is where everything, you have to use all your little money for all of that. <sighs> that was a lot. Hopefully, I did not confuse anybody. Hopefully, I did not, um, you know, get anybody mixed up. And I hopefully, I answered all the questions. Well, there were no real questions, but hopefully, I gave you guys enough information for you guys to get an idea how much doctors are getting paid per month. Now, as I mentioned before, this was on looming on the fact that there's this, there's so much conversation going on about how doctors are treated in the healthcare system and how doctors are getting paid in the healthcare system in addition to the conversation on social media about how young professionals in Kingston especially are being paid comparatively to how the cost of living is exponentially higher than how much we are getting paid for us to actually be able to live a good sustainable life. Hopefully I have explained well enough how much how doctors get paid in Jamaica as well as explain the figures this is real straight no chaser straight T complete and honest figures and hopefully those of you guys who may be interested in doing medicine or who are currently doing medicine have an idea of how much you get paid at the end of it all and so that you can you know plan and determine your future these are real figures I have not you know padded on not giving the extra not giving the less so that to make it seem like we're poor unfortunate souls i am just giving you guys the real figure as to how much we get paid as doctors in jamaica if you have any more questions leave them down in the comments below and i'll answer them to the best of my abilities and now that the video is over don't forget to like comment share and subscribe jazz hands and until next time, I'll see you guys next week, Tuesday, for the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Peace!